Join us again at Nomad PDU. Today I want to talk about running the Nomad, uh, the new V5.5 or multi-chemistry uh, batteries in parallel or be able to increase your battery bank. Um, become quite relevant lately because a lot of people have had the V5, uh, which is uh, this one here, and that's been around for uh, over five years now. So a lot of people are getting to the point where they've had it for three or five years and they want to retire it and then go to the next level. So I want to discuss voltage um, specifics and that is that like the 12.6 volt Nomad V5 it's an NMC and then you've got 14.6 which is the live PO4 and that's the prismatic so that's the prismatic upgraded um, so they're very very robust handle corrugations and all that type of thing so if you've got a V5 and a V5.5 can you run them in parallel can you direct connect them and the quick answer to that is no but you can connect them and there's a process you would have seen some of our YouTube before um, we show you how to do that but I'm going to explain to you today that if you take things very slowly and simply you can actually do pretty much anything with them if you like so what I've got here, as you would have seen these before, they're referred to as bulky stabilizers, DC-DC modules, or we have a SIGA DC, which you would have seen, and you can charge the, the units with these, and you would have seen this with the V5. So we've got these for the V5.5, and also the V6s, V6HD, um, and all the other life PA4 prismatics. So this one here, you can plug into a SIGA socket of your vehicle, and you can charge the V5.5. This profile, it says output is 14.6 volt. So what you're going to do with these is look at the look at the input and output. So this one says input 9 to 36 volt in. So that's coming in from say the car or whatever. And the output is 14.6. You've also got one over here that's input 9 to 36 volt. Pretty much the same as this one. But the output is 12.6 volt. So these are designed for the lithium. And what you can do is you can have multiple of these together and Basically, you can build yourself a, a big battery bank um, instead of having it all locked into one. So people are looking at a 200 amp hour, 300, 400 amp hour. That's fine, but you can't pick them up because they're too heavy. So if you have two of the uh, V5.5 and maybe one V5 because your friend's got an older one, can you link them together at a campsite? Absolutely. And what's the benefit of that? You've got all the inputs and outputs. You don't have to use them as a master and a slave. The old days when you've got batteries, you have a master and the master's getting charged. And then that feeds off to the slaves and then you can use the slaves for running your outputs. With these units, if you do it correctly, you can pretty much use everything that's on them. So if you have a 135 amp hour with some of the slim line, V6 slim lines, if you've got those, again, if it's a, a, a V6 or the Life PO4, they have a maximum 50 amp charge. These guys here, the V5.5, maximum 50 amp charge. The V5 is a maximum of 25 amp charge, regulated um, at any given time. So how do we connect them up? So I'm going to use a V5 that I've got sitting around, and I'm going to say, <coughs> I want to run these two together. Now I could run them, the master can be the, the V5.5, it can be the slave, doesn't really matter. If you've got a, a, a SIGA DC like this, and it's already set up for 12.6, what you can do is still charge your V5, okay, from your car. So you've got your V5 in your car, um, and you've got that plugged into the, uh, the input, like your 5 or 10, for example. So I've got that plugged in, so that's gonna charge my V5. And then you say, well, I want to. what about running the V5.5 with this guy here. Now you can use this conversion here, and this is a five amp, but you can get these in tens and twenties. That's a 20. But you've got to remember that if you're going to run everything off, say this one here, so I've got a fridge running off, uh, what have I got? I've just got one fridge running off that. I've also got that charging at the moment from ACDC. So I'm charging that with ACDC at the moment, but I could actually add, if I wanted to, I could add this, which is a 5 amp 14.6 profile, which is basically that's got 14.6 going in from the AC-DC, and that's a 10 amp. I could if I wanted to, just to show you how it works. Uh, so input is this one here. So I might go, that's going to take 9 to 36 volt, like so. And then I'm going to charge my um, V5.5 with this. Okay. So now as you can see, that's a 5 amp, so there's a conversion cost, so that's, that's actually taken 5.4 out and plug it into there. That's charging with 10 amp, there's another 5 going in, you see I've got it running on a wide leak there, so I've got 15 amp going in. I could, if I wanted to, add a solar panel up to 300 watt into that, even though I've got a charge going on here. So technically speaking, if I was running these in parallel, you'd have a master and a slave, but when we do it this way, we pretty much can use everything. So if this guy here is already full, 12.6, and that one over there is at 4%, so it's very low, but I'm still running the fridge. That's putting over five amp, 
and it currently is putting in, it's actually taking 10.9 because it's also running the fridge. These guys have Bluetooth, so you can actually see the stats and everything on your phone. So what I've got here is, let's say, that's charging from your car, and that's a 5 amp or your 10 amp, whatever it is, that's charging from your car. You might also have your solar plugged in, maximum any time with the V5 is 25 amp. So I've charged my V5 and I've got a, a new V5.5. I've got this trickling over, a little bit like water flow, but I'm regulating it and I'm making it so that it's just safe. You know, th theoretically and technically there's things we can do without it, but to be safe is to do this and it just means you're not going to have a problem, you're going to have the right current go through, power spikes and all that are not going to be relevant because we're regulating the charge. So you can get these in 5s, 10s, 20s, you can also get them step up, step down. They can take 9 to 36 volt and turn to 20, you know, they can, they can run it at 14.6 or 24 volt, 18 volt, it's just a step up. You can see them online, they're just a DC, DC voltage stabiliser. So I'm using this at the moment, I'm charging it from the car, for example, which I haven't got the car plugged in, obviously. That will be charging, okay? And then that's drawing out five amp going over there, but I'll be putting in five amp. So basically it's gonna trickle across and it's always gonna keep that full. So when this car is off, for example, or at night time, if you still got this connected, all that's gonna do is keep that topped up. You wake up in the morning, and that might be at 60%, so it might be at say 11 and a half volt. It doesn't matter because that unit takes nine to 36 volt and converts it to, on this one, 14.6. If I wanted to and I had V5 set up and someone came along with, sorry, I had V5.5 set up and I was running that in the vehicle already, I'd have one of these, a Sega DC, and it'd say um, output for, uh, sorry, the input is uh, nine to 36 volt, and the output is 14.6. So I'd take that, I'd be charging that unit from the car, and then I can have basically one of the, the, uh, the units that charges, takes nine to 36 volt, converts it to 12.6, and I can step it down from the V5.5. So it's important to note, you can run multi-chemistry, you can run different size battery packs, but in traditional parallel, you can't have two different types of batteries, two different sizes, and then run parallel. Um, it's not good to do that, it's not safe to do that. But if you do it this way, you could have another one added in here. So if I had another one, so like that one over there, I could take another one of these, and I could take the output, which I might do, this is a 9 to 36 volt, 14.6. So because I don't have a spare Anderson here, I'll say take the output of this one, and then I'll plug it into that unit over there, and then basically it's gonna be from the car charging this, tricking over that, tricking over that. And always the last one on the chain is gonna keep full and topped up. And then I can use, you know, all the Sega DCs you still got, the Sigas you've got. You can use all those outputs. You can still use these ones here, the jacks for anything else. You've also got USB fast, USB-C on the V5.5. And then you've got the um, maximum output of the V5.5 at any time is 100 amp amp. The V5, the maximum output at any, at any given time is 20 amp. So, you know, it's five times the max output. So you can run, if you wanted to have these Y leads, and I've done this in another tube, is where I've had four fridges running so I might have, uh, what have I got here? So I've got one fridge here, I'll put a wire in there, I can run two off that. And if I'm going to run that and be charging it, I've still got, um, I've got two more Andersons, I could run another four fridges off that. I could literally run six fridges off that 300 amp out. And all you've got to remember is just take your time. Don't start putting cables everywhere and then mix and match and then reversing it and doing all sorts of stuff. It's really simple. What are you taking out from a unit and what do you want to charge it with? What are the profiles? So if I had a normal battery and it was only say a calcium battery or whatever, you just say, well, it's gonna take nine to 36 volt, okay? And you might have alligator clips coming in and then on the output, it's regulating, it's gonna go to what am I gonna charge? Am I gonna charge a V5.5 or any of the Life PA4 series of 14.6 or am I gonna charge a V5, which is 12.6 profile? What I am finding though is people are trying to charge the V5 with a 14.6 and they're trying to charge a V5.5 with the V5 charger. You've got to remember, the V5.5 needs 14.6 volt, otherwise it's not going to charge. So if you use a, a Nomad V5 charger on the V5.5, it won't charge. If you use the 5.5 charger, which is a 14.6 on the 12.6, then the, uh, the V5 is not going to like it because it's overcharging. So the BMS is going to intermittently cut in, cut out and reset. So you've got to use the right charger for the right product. Um, and you can't use multi-stage chargers that are not the right ones for the unit. So they are specifically designed to have certain voltage um, characteristics and as long as you use things like these and they're really available for our partner channel or you can email us at uh, contact at nomadpdu.com.au 
and then we'll let you know where you can get them and, and so on and so forth. But you can buy them, if you, know, if you go to eBay, you'll be able to find these voltage stabilizers um, online. And then, again, you, know, you have to configure them up yourself. I have seen them where people are not fusing them. Um, and I like to fuse the in and the out. And it's just, again, do you have to? Uh, theoretically, you don't probably have to, but why take the risk, melt the wires, damage the DC when you can just fuse it? And just, I'll be, I'll be fusing it. And again, if you can use Andersons, use Andersons. Um, we've got the SIGA option, which is the SIGA DC, but these guys here, you know, they just, you know, they can flap around or they can get loose and things like that, whereas the Andersons are a better connection. So if you want to run parallel systems and you want to run a small off-grid house, tiny home, whatever, that's how you can set up multiple units. Just remember, you've got a master, goes to slave to slave, <coughs> traditionally. <coughs> However, as long as you charge with a voltage out and then convert it to the, the right uh, voltage in for the next unit and so on, you can keep linking them. Um, and you can increase the flow across by adding a 10 amp instead of five. But I find the five amp in running three or four fridges off that unit there, if I've got, say, that running there and I might have a solar panel, I don't really need more. That's just gonna keep tricking it across. It's gonna run down, but it, you've gotta remember, the compressor's gonna go off on the fridges at some stage. So I haven't seen them run down when I've got them set up like that. With the five amp, I've never seen them run down. Um, but to be safe, probably an extra 20, 30 bucks, get yourself a 10 amp one and you're pretty well covered. So that's running parallel multi-chemistry um, using DC voltage stabilizer or DC-DC. Um, again, don't let people talk in telling you, oh no, it's this, it's that. It's quite simply, it takes a voltage in, converts to a stable voltage out, it's a voltage stabilizer or a DC-DC, okay? And that's really all it is. Different configurations, etc. But that's how you get the most out of, say, multiple 100 amp hours instead of being stuck with a 200 amp hour. So if you've got a, want a 200 amp hour, I'd rather have two of these because I've got so many more outputs to use. I can run so many more accessories at a campsite instead of being stuck with something that's 30 odd kilos. It starts to get quite heavy. So that's the advantage of having these running in parallel. Um, you know, and the cost wise, it's probably, you know, much of much, it's probably the same price as the 200 amp hour if you've got two of them. And at least you can borrow them to somebody else, put them in two cars instead of one. So there's a lot of advantages to actually basically daisy chaining them, um, and that's the advantage of daisy chaining. So again, if you've got questions, contact nomadpu.com.au and we'll get back to you. If you need a little mud map or diagram, then we can help you up with that. So again, we'll talk again soon. If you've got any questions, then by all means, hit us up on Facebook um, or just email us directly. Thanks again.